my grandparents came from Germany and they met on the boat and started dating when they arrived in America and were married um, shortly after that. And she was Catholic and he was Lutheran. And she wanted him to go to the Catholic Church. So he went for a few times and he said, no, Catholic, or, that's not for me. <laughs> so she, um, in order to keep him, you know, religious, she joined the Lutheran Church. And he, he at first, you know, got up early in the morning and went to early morning mass and everything, but it, it just didn't seem right to him. My grandpa then, I don't know why they picked Wayne, it was close, I guess, and he worked in a butcher shop and cleaned chickens and, you know, they sold chickens in the butcher shop. And then the college uh, was formed in Wayne, and so they asked him if he would come and work at the college, and they had uh, coal that they used for heat. And so he'd get up early in the morning to uh, shovel the coal in to get the dormitory warm, you know, and, and, and the classrooms uh, warm. And then my grandpa and grandma had twin boys. And so when they got old, old enough, he'd get them up early in the morning and they'd have to come and help shovel the coal into the furnace. And they, everyone called them the coal dust twins. <laughs> and they got a little money, you know, for helping. And so when my dad went to college and got his degree, then they sent him to Chicago to elect electronic school or some kind of school. And so <clears throat> then he came back to Wayne State College and did all the wiring and everything. And they had tunnels underneath the uh, dormitories and the food place and everything. And so he knew where everything was. And so even after he retired, why they'd come and ask him. In fact, they had, <laughs> they had a yeah, little thing going around about that at night you could hear the ghost down in those tunnels. <laughs> I don't know who started that rumor, but the wind would blow, you know, and it'd make a weird noise. And so they, they said that there was a ghost down in the tunnels. <laughs> well, uh, my mom came from uh, Missouri and she was a housemaid. My dad worked at the college, yeah. And he met her and then they got married and uh, she moved then into Wayne. I was born then in Wayne, Nebraska. When I was just real little, my grandpa had gotten a little car that had a little window in the back, you know, it was a rump, like a rumble seat car. I was just little and I, they were going down to visit my grandma that was in Missouri. And I rode in the car and I rode in the back where the win window was. I used to love to play the piano, and we didn't have a piano at home. And so I'd go to my grandparents because they had a piano to practice and took piano lessons. And since I took piano lessons, we'd have recitals and uh, at the college and play the big grand piano. And, uh, and a lot of the college kids would come, you know, to the recitals. I worked at the theater in Wayne when I was young, you know, when, you, uh, when they used to take a uh, light and to show you your seat. The usher, I guess you would call her. I ushered for several years and then I progressed to popping the popcorn. <laughs> and that paid a little bit more. I think I got 10 cents an hour. <laughs> and then um, the the person that owned the theater had several theaters uh, in, in small towns around. And it was called, the, the theater I worked in in Wayne was called the Gay Theater. And of course, 
as years went by, that wasn't a very good name for theaters. But the, per the, the person that had owned the theater's last name was Gailey, and so that's why they called it the Gay Theater. So he changed it, and I didn't, of course, know what they were even talking about. You know, how come Gailey was <laughs> gay, gay theater? Why would they change it? the name of it. It would be late when the whole theater got out, so he asked if I would mind closing up and taking the money down to his office and locking it in the safe, and then I'd have to walk home probably, well, it was about 13 blocks from the theater to where we lived. And that's when my husband started to show up at the theater, and. He'd ask me if I needed a ride home, and it was 13 blocks, so yeah, yeah, I'd take a ride home. And that's where I met him. There were two high schools. One was uh, Wayne Prep, where I went, and it was, uh, it was a teacher's college, and the, the teachers practiced on us. And that's where I, I uh, grew up and, and graduated from. And then the other was Wayne High, and my husband, went to Wayne High. Yeah, I can remember my dad, when he, or when we'd drive up to the, to where we lived, if I didn't come in right away, he'd flick the light on the porch light on, you know, I man, get in here, you don't need to be sitting out there. I worked part-time in the dime store, and I also worked at the theater at the same time. And I think I was probably making, uh, well, it was 10 cents an hour at the, the theater, and um, probably around that at the dime store. <laughs> so, you know, you'd have to put in a, quite a few hours before you really had very much money. My grandpa smoked cigars. And so on Saturday, he would always go down in this shop where he, uh, bought his cigars was right next to the theater and he when he got his cigars he'd give me a nickel and I'd always give an ice cream cone and then to this day everybody makes fun of me because I, I always like ice cream whenever we have any dessert up here I want a dip of ice cream <laughs> grandpa had bees he owned a little plot of land where he'd had, he had a garden and there was a cave where he'd, you know, put his potatoes down in the cave to keep them from spoiling, I guess. And um, then he had um, bees there. He would take the cones out, and uh, the honey cones, and I'd walk around Wayne, where we live, and sell, hold the little wagon and have these cones of honey, and. They paid 10 cents for them. <laughs> I went to college and he went into the service. Well, he farmed for a while, but then I think it was what the war was at. <laughs> okay. He was stationed at Camp McCoy, Wisconsin, and he used to drive home in his convertible and take a couple of, of his friends with him and stay for the weekend and then drive back. And that's where he got the nickname Wiz because he, he drove <laughs> really, really fast. <laughs>
And oh, he started to cry and he said, oh, no. I'll just get beaten if I go home and say that I had to stay after school. And I said, oh, well, it's not because you're naughty or anything. It's just I want to help you with your reading and your spelling. But he just, oh, he just sobbed. So I said, well, I'll go out and meet your mother and tell her that you're not, you haven't been naughty or anything, that I just wanted to help you with your schoolwork. But he didn't, he didn't even want the teacher to come to his house because he was afraid that they would think he had done something wrong at school. That was a different experience. <laughs> There used to be a place in Wayne where all the lovers would go. They called it Lover's Lane. And uh, <clears throat> we went to Lover's Lane, and he pulled something out of his pocket. And he said, here, this is for you. And so I opened it up, and it was an engagement ring, a diamond that he had bought at the PX before he was in service, before he went over sees we got married. His folks lived on the farm. And so when he came back, they were building a new house in Wayne. And so we lived in their house while they were building the new house and started, he started farming then. That's where I learned to milk cows and show the girls how to gather the eggs. The old hens would sit on the eggs, you know, and they wouldn't want to get off the, they were setting hens. So I said, well, just take a stick and hold their head down and reach in behind and pull them out and throw them out. <laughs> and oh boy, the old hens would really, you know, cackle at you, but so they gathered the eggs and, and then on Saturday night you take the eggs and cream. We had a separator and that would separate the milk from the cream and take the cream to town and the eggs to town to sell. He drank Schlitz and he'd take a six pack and he'd go around to the neighbors after, you know, the work was done at night and have a here, I'll have a beer with me, you know, and so they'd have a beer with him. I can remember I was starting to have labor pains and he was milking the cows. And I said, I think I need to go to the hospital. And he said, right now? Um, I said, yeah, I think we need to get to the hospital. So he took me into the hospital and of course I didn't have her right away. And so he had to get home and finish milking the cows and they were going to call him when they thought I was going to deliver. And we had party lines and so the neighbors, you know, kept hearing this, that somebody was trying to get us. And so they picked up the phone and she said, well, he's probably still doing chores. We'll run over and tell him. And so he came in and she was born before he got there. <laughs> His mother was a wonderful cook, and, uh, you know, she taught me a lot of cooking, and, yeah, I got to like living on the farm. When it came to, really, bookkeeping, he left it up to me. So you had to kind of not spend more than you made. <laughs> But I'm, I was glad, you know, to have learned because when he died, I wouldn't have known how to do any of that. And now I think Pam has taken over. The girls uh, would come home from school and they would have to help do chores like gather the eggs or feed the little baby chickens. Before school started, I would make them, kids wore dresses then, and make a dress for 
every day of the week. Mary was more, Pam always said she was lazy. <laughs> but she was uh, um, kind of the creative one. She just was more, not, not a farm girl, even though she lived on the farm. <laughs> A lot of the farmers were retiring, you know, they were getting retirement age. And he decided to build a house in Wayne because that's where my parents lived and where I went to school. And he went to school, only to a different school in Wayne than I did. Yeah, I was kind of excited because we were building a new house, you know, and to find the furniture for it and the blueprints for it and all that. And he didn't do whatever you want. It was all right with him, you know, just make it the way you want it. Just, I, I need a three-car garage. That's the only thing he really stated that he wanted. Well, when my husband died, you know, it was a real shock. It was right at Christmas time and I had no idea that anything was wrong with him. He came up to, and he, I was making out Christmas cards. And he said, I'm kind of tired, I think I'll go to bed. So he went into the bedroom and I was in the kitchen making Christmas cards and pretty soon I heard him say my name. But then I thought, well, what's he saying? And so he was calling me, help me get into bed, he said and he had <clears throat> collapsed on the floor before he got into to the bed. And I could tell that there was really something serious wrong with him. And so we had two doctors that lived on <clears throat> either side of us. And I called them, one of them to come over and well, I asked if he could help me get him back into bed. And pretty soon he said, call the ambulance to his wife, she had come with him. And so she called the ambulance and he was dead before he got to the hospital. So then there I was with this big house. <laughs> well, mom, you live here alone in this big house. I think it's time you move to Lincoln. We're tired of coming up to Wayne all the time. And I said, oh, I'm fine right here. You know, I didn't want to move. But then I got to thinking I couldn't drive anymore. I had macular degeneration and couldn't pass the eye chart test. Uh, he decided that it probably was time to go into a retirement center. And then she had found this place. And it took a while to get used to it, but I love it now. It's the best place for me. I'm so thankful for my three girls. Just been wonderful. They'd come. Well, Pam especially and her husband would come every weekend probably and stay. And Wayne, Mary, well, she was out in California. She was uh, kind of the creative one. She liked sewing and piano. They took piano lessons and she liked playing the piano. And Tracy is my youngest and she, well, she went to school in um, Lincoln. And um, she is an optometrist and sells glasses at Lens Crafters. And she was the general manager of that store. The happiest times in my life were when we were young and had good friends and got together with them on, the, on Saturday night and when you brought your cream and eggs into town to sell. And usually we'd have card games or something that we'd play at different houses. You just do what you have to do at the time that you have to do it. <laughs>